Sam, breaking news for you now. And 2023 was officially the hottest year on record, with global temperatures reaching close to 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. According to the Copernicus Global Climate Highlights report, close to 50% of days in 2023 were 1.5% warmer than the 1850 to 1900 level. 2023 was the second warmest year for Europe at 1.02 degrees Celsius above the 1991 to 2020 average. Antarctic sea ice extent uh, experienced unprecedented lows in 2023 and atmospheric carbon dioxide and methane continue to increase, reaching record levels. Well, joining me now is our science and technology editor, Tom Clark. Uh, I mean, Tom, what I just read out there was all bad news, all bad headlines. Yeah. What, what, uh, is there any nuance when you look through all the full release? No. I mean, this is the trend that we've been seeing coming at us for decades. Uh, it was even widely expected that 2023 was going to be the warmest on record before the year had even ended, because the last five months of last year were just so unprecedentedly warm. And we're talking about global averages here. So in some continents, some parts of the world, they may have had a slightly average year, but globally, put every single day together, averaged out across the globe, uh, it was the warmest year that we've ever recorded, records going back to the, uh, to the middle part of the 19th century. So this, and 2023 wasn't just significant, that it continues this trend that we've been seeing uh, for years now, it's just significantly warmer. It's stepped right out of the bounds. Normally, it's about teasing the kind of the, no the signal out of the noise and the kind of variation that we have year to year. But 2023 was just so much warmer. Now, there's a reason for that, partly, and that's a big, powerful El Nino that's developing in the Pacific and will continue to develop through this year. That puts warmth that's stored in the oceans into the atmosphere, it gives global temperatures a boost. Uh, that's probably why it's just that much warmer. But the trend is continuing and there are other factors too. We saw very warm temperatures in the Mediterranean and the Atlantic Ocean last year as well. They've got nothing to do with El Nino. So it's not just about that. When would we have hoped to see global temperatures plateau at least? I mean, clearly this is a standout year of, it, of an increase, but yeah. were we expecting and can we accept a small increase for the next couple of years? When, when does it need to turn? We... Right now, we can't expect that to happen anytime soon because as things stand, we are putting carbon dioxide emissions and methane emissions, global greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere at an increasing rate. Now, there is some hints that that might peak in the coming few years. If emissions from China, for example, there's some evidence they might peak quite soon, we might see a downward trend in emissions, then we might start to see temperatures responding, but there will be quite a delay in how they do. So currently we're on course for um, you know, one and a half degrees within the next, uh, sorry, when I say one and a half degrees, I mean that will be the, the, the steady average across the globe um, over de a decade long periods when we reach one and a half degrees globally. We could hit that within a decade or so, and then things as they currently stand will of course for about three degrees of warming, which is obviously a situation that we can't uh, accept. Mm -hmm. That's why there's so much urgency and fuss about how do we work now to start to limit emissions to avoid every year being like last year, sometime in the next decade or two. And by the end of this century, we, we're on course to see, uh, you know, t t uh, temperatures, global average temperatures twice that. And that's something societies won't be able to survive healthily. Tom Clark, thanks for bringing us those uh, somewhat depressing uh, numbers.